My name is Bill Kinney, and this is video number 21 on my series on the foundations of arithmetic algebra and graphing with a focus on real life interpretation and application. Though in this video, number 21, we're not going to focus on applications, we're going to focus on purely algebra. I hope this is the last video or two of my series, my sub series on the arithmetic of algebra of rational numbers. Um, like I said, I want to focus on more pure math here, you might say. And it is important for you because it's going to be important for your, your algebra skills. And that'll then help you solve real life problems too later on that we'll encounter. Uh, you'll need these skills also to help you with calculators and with spreadsheets. So what, what, what it really is a rational number? I've been calling them fractions as well. A rational number is a, is a number, any number of the form a over b, where what? Well, for one thing, you don't want to divide by zero. That's not allowed. I haven't talked about why. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I'll get to that now, but I'll talk about it maybe in the next video. And uh, A and B are integers. I haven't used negative rational numbers in these past nine videos, but uh, you certainly can have negative numbers for A and B. For example, we could do the fraction negative 1 divided by negative 1. That ends up being the same as 1 over 1. The two negatives make a positive. In fact, it's equal to 1. Negative 4 over 6. Turns out you can bring the negative sign in front, out in front and think of that as negative 4 sixth. In other words, the additive inverse of 4 sixth. And that can be reduced to negative 2 thirds. The additive inverse of 2 thirds. These are all equivalent fractions here. And in fact, yes, 4 sixth is equivalent to 2 thirds as well. I could have had the negative sign in the bottom initially and I can bring the negative sign out in front as well and get the same answer. All right, so a little bit of the arithmetic of rational numbers when you've got negative signs, negative numbers, negative integers involved. A and B can't be other non-integer numbers though. Well, or I should be careful here. We saw, we've, we have seen that A and B themselves could be rational numbers. But ultimately, anytime you've got rational numbers for A and B, you should be able to reduce it to an integer situation, and you just do the, the fraction division to do that, like if we had 2 thirds divided by uh, 5 sevenths. We would need to do that as 2 thirds times 7 fifths to get an equivalent form, 14 fifteenths, of this number where the numerator and denominator are rational numbers. So I really should have said initially, gone back up here and said A and B, a rational number is any number that can be put in this form. It might not be in this form initially, but it can be. The rational numbers are closed under addition and multiplication. Let's actually do the multiplication one first. Two thirds times, I'm doing dots for times now, times 1 fourth is 2 twelfths, equivalently 1 sixth. It's another rational number. Both the numerator and denominators are integers here. You multiply the numerators individually and you multiply the denominators individually and you, if you can reduce then you want to reduce. You're still going to get integers in the numerator and denominator. The rational numbers are closed under multiplication and that would still be the case even if one of these was negative. We got negative there. The rational numbers are closed under addition. Two thirds plus one fourth. We can get a common denominator of 12. And in fact, we can even think of getting that common denominator by doing a multiplication. Two thirds times four, four, four fourths doesn't change the value of two-thirds because this is just a disguised form of one. That's going to give me a denominator of 12 and one-fourth times three-thirds 
will give me a denominator of 1 in that one. You can think of the conversion to an equivalent form with a common denominator as an appropriate multiplication. giving us two equivalent rational numbers with the same denominator. And now you can add those and get 11 twelfths. Once again, this is illustrating closure. We have a rational number here. The numerator and denominator are, are integers. The rational numbers are closed um, under addition and multiplication. And in fact, subtraction and division. And they satisfy more algebra properties that we've seen before as well, like the commutative property. If I had done 1 fourth plus 2 thirds instead, it would have ultimately been the same addition in the reverse order, 3 twelfths plus 8 twelfths. It still would have given us 11 twelfths because integer addition is addition, is commutative. 8 plus 3 equals 3 plus 8. We still get an 11 twelfths there because, again, addition of integers is commutative. Multiplication is commutative. Before we did 2 thirds times negative 1 fourth, if I had done negative 1 fourth times 2 thirds, it still would have given me negative 2 twelfths or negative 1 sixth. So multiplication is commutative because multiplication of integers is also commutative. It's associative. Um, negative one-fourth times two-thirds in parentheses, then times five-sevenths is going to give me negative one-sixth times five-sevenths, negative five-forty-seconds. And if I had done the two-thirds times the five-sevenths first, indicated by putting the parentheses around those two things, I'm going to get the same final answer. Negative 10, uh, 84 here, but that reduces to negative 4, 5, 40 seconds. Same answer in the end. Addition is also associative. The distributive property still works. As an example, two-thirds times, well, let's do a one-fourth minus three-fifths. Remembering minus is really the same as adding the negative. This is the same as plus negative three-fifths, if, if I prefer. So the distributive property still should work here. Let's first do what's inside the parentheses by getting a common denominator of 20. 1 fourth is the same as 5 twentieths. 3 fifths is the same as 12 twentieths. 5 minus 12 is negative 7. And cancel the 2 with the 20 here. In the end, giving me negative 7 thirtieths. The negative sign can be brought out in front. If I do 2 thirds times 1 fourth minus 2 thirds times 3 fifths, that should give me the same the final answer. 2 thirds times 1 fourth, if you do a little cancellation, is 1 sixth. 2 thirds times 3 fifths, cancel the 3's, you get 2 fifths. Get a common denominator of 30 here. That sounds good. 5 thirtieths minus 12 thirtieths. I get negative 7 thirtieths again, and I can pull that negative sign out in front. I do get the same thing. So those that's a quick summary of the main algebra properties uh, that, that rational numbers satisfy just like the integers do, and those will be handy for us when we do algebra.